In 6,000 years, a mere blink of an eye to the mighty Imperium of Man, the Secret of Eldar, or any other Warhammer 40k race, the Tau have transformed themselves into an advanced, spacefaring empire. In the early days of the Tau, their homeworld was divided into warring tribes and fierce battles erupted. During this time, the Ethereals emerged, spreading the idea of the greater good and uniting the Tau with their message of harmony and cooperation. This level of cohesion among the Tau led to their quick development as an advanced race in their own right. The Tau now seek to spread the greater good to other planets and species by diplomacy if at all possible, but by military conquest if necessary. The greater good is the central philosophy of the Tau Empire, which teaches that all sentient beings are equal and play an important part to society. All must put away their differences to unite for the greater good of the entire empire. Some other species, including some human worlds, find this appealing as well and have joined the Tau Empire. Those who do not accept the greater good and seek conflict with the Tau are seen as unenlightened and misguided. The Tau species is divided into five castes, all with distinct physical traits and abilities hailing back to the early Tau clans. The Tau are slightly shorter than the average human, have leathery blue-gray skin, four-fingered hands, and hoofed feet. The Tau as a whole do not have psychers and have no connection to the warp. This prevents them from falling prey to the temptations of chaos, but is little defense when confronted with their horrors firsthand when it gains a foothold in the material realm. The fire cast form the military backbone of the Tau Empire. They are larger and more muscular due to being descendants of the hunters and warriors of the plains tribes of the Tau homeworld. The earth cast are the builders, engineers, scientists, and artists. They are responsible for developing and maintaining the impressive technology of the Tau. They are short and stocky compared to the other castes. The water cast is comprised of merchants and diplomats. They are multilingual and handle interactions with most of the other factions in the Warhammer 40k universe. The Tau Empire does not have diplomatic relations with either the forces of chaos or the orcs, as they cannot be reasoned with and could not serve the greater good. The water cast are generally taller, thinner, and less physically built than other Tau. The air cast make up the Tau Empire's navy, and thus provide support and transport for fire cast warriors. They are even taller and thinner than the water cast, due to having spent their whole lives in space, to the point where landing on a planet and enduring real gravity could cause bodily harm. They are descendants of a tribe of ancient Tau, which could glide on air currents. And finally, the ethereal cast, who are the political and religious leaders of the Tau. They are distinguished by a diamond-shaped ridge bone in the center of their forehead, which some have speculated emits a pheromone or latent psychic field which makes them more influential to others and would explain their powers of bringing so many together on the path to the greater good. The Tau Empire is also made up of other races, many coming into the Empire willingly after diplomatic talks and seeing the benefits of the greater good and the technological achievements of the Tau. Among these races, most notably, there are the Krut, Vespid, Nikasar, and Humans. The Krut are a tall avian species that is joined as a member of the Tau Empire. The Krut evolve by consuming the bodies of fallen enemies to absorb their genetic traits. The Tau first encountered the Krut when one of their worlds was being besieged and overwhelmed by orcs. The Tau intervened and fought side by side to defeat a large invasion force. They then continued fighting together to liberate all Krut worlds and formed a lasting alliance. The Krut do not possess flight or space technology of their own, but are the most common race employed as auxiliaries in Tau armies. The Vespid are a race of winged insects who have come to be a part of the Tau Empire. Upon first contact, communication was impossible with the Vespid because they have a completely alien mindset. The ethereal caste called for the creation of so-called communion helms, which allowed communication between the ethereals and the Vespid leaders, after which the Vespids understood the concept of the greater good and their place within it. The Nikasar, a race of powerful psychers, were the first non-Tau race to join the Tau Empire. They serve as scouts and explorers for the Tau Navy, which suits them due to their insatiable curiosity and the ability to naturally hibernate 
for long periods during space travel. The Tau first encountered the Nikasar when they discovered a fleet that had been in space for centuries. Humans are a surprisingly common sight in the Tau Empire and are embraced by the Tau, although they are seen as the worst kind of heretics by their fellow humans in the Imperium. Many of the human worlds of the Tau Empire grew from trade and diplomatic missions to colonies on the border of the Imperium. Others were former Imperial Guard forces left in Tau-controlled space after the Damocles Gulf Crusade against the Tau ground to a halt. The bulk of those forces were redeployed to combat the Tyranid High Fleet, Behemoth. Since the Tau do not have the Psyker gene and have limited knowledge of the warp, their ships are only capable of short-distance jumps. This makes their fleet slower than other races, such as the Imperium, which can make much faster, albeit more dangerous, jumps through the Immaterium. Other than that, the Tau possess some of the most advanced technology and weaponry in the Warhammer 40k universe. They have advanced vehicles, battle suits, and stealth technology that are the envy of other races. The Tau battle suit are the Tau's primary weapon of war, functioning as highly mobile, heavy weapons platforms. The Tau prefer ranged combat and will generally use auxiliaries from other races to provide melee support. They plan their assaults carefully and will prefer to tactically fall back and strike again when in a better position than to be drawn into an unfavorable battle. There are two primary tactics employed by the Tau, Montka, or Killing Blow, and Kayun, or Patient Hunter. Montka describes carefully planned attacks aimed at an enemy's most vital strategic objects, such as structures or leaders. This is designed to cripple the enemy, after which the rest of the forces will be much easier to deal with. Kayun describes a strategy of ambushes by luring enemy forces into well-planned Tau killing zones. Tau fire warriors wear distinctive yellow armor and mainly carry either the pulse rifle or pulse carbine. The pulse rifle is the primary weapon and is a semi-auto, high-powered laser weapon. It has greater range and firepower compared to the standard-issue Imperial Guard laser gun. The pulse carbine is a shorter-range, fully automatic weapon, similar in technology to the pulse rifle. Each of the other species in the Tau Empire generally uses their own native weaponry, such as the Krut Rifle, Vespid Neutron Blaster, or the Imperial Laser Gun. The Tau stand alone in the Warhammer 40k universe as the only ones seeking diplomatic solutions to conflicts and as a means of expansion. Their belief in the greater good, as well as their preference for strategic, ranged combat, set them apart in this grim, dark setting. But this begs the question, how much of their adherence to the greater good comes from pure optimism and a desire to work together, and how much could be influenced by other means? Particularly, the potential subtle mind control of the ethereal caste, social caste-based conditioning, indoctrination, or the communion helms created for the Vespid, which could be complete mind control. Is there a darker side to the Tao? Is it worth it for a peaceful universe with everyone working together for the greater good? Or are they really just the naively optimistic, good-intentioned faction of the Warhammer 40k universe? That's for you to decide.